Was trying to even up this series against the Oakland A's. They dropped one here last night, the first game of the series, an inning that got away from them. But offensively, they stayed in it. They tried to claw their way back. A couple of guys had a good night. Carlos Correa being one of those guys who had two doubles, and he drove in a run late in the game in the top of the eighth. He scored Jose Altuve. That was Correa's 58th ribby of the season, and he's been driving in runs as of late. And, a, and, a, and on a tear, really, I should say. In his last 23 games, let's take a look at the numbers, 25 RBI for Carlos Correa. And that was not long after he moved into that four hole. And he was coming off of an ankle sprain at the time, too. But he's looked much better in those 23 games for him. The numbers, 292 is what he's hitting. He's had five homers in that span, slugging 596. Looking much better at the plate. And I want to toss this up to Blummer. He's still hitting fourth tonight. but. In his second year in the league, we've seen him make adjustments. We've seen pitchers make adjustments against him. But what was it about hitting cleanup that changed things for Carlos Correa? Uh, thanks, Julian. I think it's just putting him in that four hole. A.J. Hinch uh, had hinted at it a little bit when he was talking about moving Carlos into that four spot that he wanted to see him be a little bit more aggressive. I think early on in the season we saw him be a little more passive trying to increase that on base percentage but he is the right man in the right spot at that four hole to be driving in some runs because we know it doesn't matter if the guy's on first second or third he has the ability to drive that runner in and himself. And we are set to work here Oakland Alameda County Stadium. Astros took one on the chin last night. And a youngster on the hill for the Oakland A's tonight brings a strike. George Springer had one hit in last night's game, hitting 255 overall, leads the team with his 20 home runs, and has driven in 52. Comes off speed and misses a ball and a strike on George. And we'll take a look at that starting lineup in just a moment. That hit for George last night. A ninth inning single and he hung out a rope with that base hit. Another change up and that apparently is a very big pitch for Overton. 65 degrees at game time it will get a little chillier as time goes on. Overton rocks to the wind. Strike three called inside edge. So he gets a strikeout on his first man of the night. Yeah, let's take a look now at that starting lineup for the Astros brought to you by Southwest Airlines. George Springer, followed by Marwin Gonzalez, Jose Altuve in the three spot. Middle three, Carlos Correa, the RBI man, Luis Valbuena, and Carlos Gomez in the bottom three. Colby Rasmus, Evan Gaddis, and Jake Marisnik. Dylan Overton getting the start, called up, making his second start on the season for the Oakland A's. Fastball changeup. He likes that changeup a lot. Last start, 50% fastballs, about 28% on the changeup. In his eight and two thirds innings pitch this season, he has given up five home runs. Yeah, just a couple of starts. First one pretty good. The second one really got roughed up. That against the San Francisco Giants right across the bay. Marwin Gonzalez continues to play very good baseball and Really leaves A.J. Hinch with no choice but to keep him in the lineup. That's the way you want to do it. Especially against a left hander A.J. Reed the other guy in this roster that can play first base but with a lot of lefties they've been facing here of late it's been nice to have Marwin Gonzalez in that lineup swinging right handed. You know and the thing about Marwin recently the last couple of home runs anyway have come from the left side and he has really jacked him well. One in Seattle here on the trip, one last night. Again, that changeup, it appears that we'll see that pitch quite a bit from Overton. Talking to Steve Sparks about Overton, trying to get a scouting report, compared him to ex Oakland Athletic Dallas Braden. Guy who picked up a perfect game in his career and now has turned into a very good broadcaster. It's three and two on Marlin. Umpires for tonight's game behind the plate. Manny Gonzalez, Brian O'Nora down at first, C.B. Buckner at second. Crucci, Field, and Culbreth is at third.
Line to left field, but right there is the left fielder. Chris Davis makes the play. Two outs here in the first inning. Marwin appeared to feel like maybe he was forced into swinging at a pitch that may not have been a strike. Two outs, bases empty for Jose Altuve. You see the numbers. Fantastic figures. 348. That leads the league. 15 home runs already for Jose. And he takes the strike. Leads the league in hits. Leads the league in stolen bases. Picked up one last night. 25 bags already on the year. Jose Altuve is in his 94th game of the year. 127 hits. Been over 200 each of the last two years. Leading the league in each case. When it comes to the stolen bases, he has also led the league each of the last two years. Back in 2014, stealing a career high 56. And he's on a pace where he could challenge that figure. Jumps away and has a 3 1 count. Four times an all star now for Jose, twice a starter. Want to get on base in that first inning and. Give the RBI man Carlos Correa a chance to drive you in. Pitch is hit hard but hook fouled on the left side. That'll fill it. It's that head through very quickly. He's been swinging it more aggressively in recent games. And chops it foul. Just as good as they come in the game right now with the bat. But you don't stop there with Altuve. The defense. The base running. And last night showed some leadership on the ball club. It's really the first time we've seen him get vocal. Good time to do it though. Generally a quiet guy, and you're right. Lines one left center field. That'll drop for a base hit. So he's at it again. One for one on the night. And that batting average will be right close to 350 now. Just another base hit on the road for Jose Altuve. Where he tears it up. Batting in the fourth position. 18 straight Throw games down. on the road. He's gotten a hit. 34 consecutive Correa. reaching base on the road. So for whatever reason, the road has been. Like home for Jose this year. In fact, had four hits just a couple of days ago. Had a shot for five. That would have been a first time for five hits in a game as now Carlos Correa stands in. And that running game, always a factor with Jose. Big swing and a foul down the right side. And good to see Carlos cutting it loose early. Fourteen home runs for Correa, 58 ribbies, and a 264 batting average. You watch Carlos Correa game in, game out, and you know there's more in there. And yet he has been quite productive. One ball and one strike. Ninetieth game of the year for Carlos. He played in 99 last year regular season and hit 22 home runs driving in 68. So he's shy of those numbers. Takes close again. It's two and one. And it has appeared at times this year that. He's been a little more passive than we saw him last year. But in the four spot in the order, he's been more aggressive and it's paid off. Again, down the right side, slicing and into that 
area just beyond the line. Smolinski can't get there. Josh Reddick, the everyday right fielder for the A's. There you see Smolinski in right field. Glasses on right field and into right center, the only areas that would be battling the sun right now. Two and two on Correa. And now 3 2. That'll put Altuve in motion. Waiting on deck is Luis Valbuena. And he's had some big swings against left handers. Correa surprisingly has hit just 218 against the Southpaws. And one of the 14 home runs coming against him. Ground ball left side, tough at shortstop. The long throw on a couple of hops. And Correa is safe, moving to third. Altuve aggressively heading first to third. And so the Astros, with the base hit by Correa, now have runners at first and third. A couple of hits on the evening. And Luis Valbuena coming to the plate. Good hustle by Carlos. He put that ground ball in a perfect spot. Simeon got to it pretty good. I was kind of waiting to see what kind of arm Marcus Simeon was going to break out, but you can see right there, double clutch really didn't have much on it and literally threw a ground ball to first base. Good read by Altuve on that throw, too. Well, you watch him run the bases. It's about as good as you will see around the major leagues. So Carlos Correa, like Altuve, two out hits here in the first inning. The Oakland A's had a big night last night with two outs and innings that started with nobody on base with two outs. And we'll see if the Astros can turn the same trick tonight. Valbuena hitting 262, 12 home runs. Strike called on the outside edge. Overton just the third major league start. He was a second rounder in 2013. The fastball just missing. Now we see the fastball in the upper 80s maybe 90 ish. And he appears perplexed. Tell you what, left handers are taking some good hacks off Overton. 444 is that batting average against him in those first two starts. We're talking about a total of eight and two third innings, and he's allowed 15 hits. And now a 2 1 count. Nice job behind the plate by Matt McBride getting a start tonight. In fact, some of the big bats not in there for the A's tonight. Yonder Alonso, who had a big game last night. Stephen Vogt, the all-star catcher, and the right fielder Josh Reddick. All sitting and watching at all left-handed bats. Two and two now on Luis. Luis was going for a three-pointer. It was. That was going to be a... Uh, Tom Dempsey type field goal. Two and two. Correa the runner at first base. Correa held on by Danny Valencia. You could see the home plate umpire Manny Gonzalez saying it was the catcher McBride asking for timeout. Throw him perfectly under the bus. I'm not taking that on myself. This guy it is. It was him. Correa goes. The pitch inside and no throw to second base. We saw McBride behind the plate maybe a couple of games in Houston and did not throw well. In fact, at times opted not to throw at all, and that's what we see here. So Correa picks up the bag. And we'll see if the Astros try to exploit that scenario behind the plate for the Oakland A's.
3 2 pitch. Breaking ball line down the right field side. And that's dropping and drops foul. Just foul. Otherwise, the Astros easily put two on the board. And high hopes for that loop and line drive down the right field line. Good job in a 3 2 count to sit back on that breaking ball left on left by Luis Valbuena. I thought he was going to be rewarded. Just foul. That stolen base by Correa, number nine. The Astros would love to get on the board early here. Ground ball right side backhanded from the knees Valencia onto his pitcher and just getting Luis Valbuena and that'll do it for the Astros. They come very close to putting a pair on the board instead nothing in the first inning after a half scoreless game. Astros a pair of hits and they came from the boys in the middle Jose Altuve and Carlos Correa as they strand a pair and now that starting lineup for the Oakland A's Coco Crisp in the top spot. He's a switch hitter as is Jed Lowry Danny Valencia bats third middle of the order we saw him go opposite field last night Chris Davis Marcus Simeon also has plenty of power 20 home runs on the year. He's followed by the DH Billy Butler and the bottom three. Right fielder Jake Smolinski, Ryan Healy, the youngster at third base, and met Matt McBride. We've seen him behind the plate. Left hander Dallas Keuchel making his 20th start on the season. He has faced the A's 13 times. 11 of those have been starts. He has pretty good numbers against him with a career 2.78 ERA, and he ranks 14th in the American League in strikeouts. 104 Ks. Dallas misses on that first offering. We talked about it. He was sharp that last time out. It came against the A's, allowed just one run in seven innings. Didn't see a lot of pitches like that one where he kind of leaves it up at 88 miles an hour, but instead down around the knees most of the time, approaching, if not at the corners. Chris fouls it back. One and two the count. Not the typical numbers now for Coco Crisp. And we mentioned it last night. He and Danny Valencia, who had been the everyday third baseman playing at first tonight, have been told that playing time might diminish here as the season rounds out. That slider grounded foul. And Dallas took a no decision. In that outstanding start against the Oakland A's, the Astros did win the ball game. And as we mentioned, they've won, the Astros have won five straight of Dallas's starts. They try to come up. And a 2 2 count. A 
Evan Gaddis comes up empty on that slider. It's three and two. Always glad when that happens that nobody's on base. Sometimes they just don't break as much as you anticipate. 3 2 a slider that misses so a lead off walk. And that's an area, excuse me an area for Dallas that has recently been much better. That's the issue we've seen all year long with Dallas Keuchel it has been the control. Back in the second position. It's walks second per nine two. inning up Great. almost Jay a walk per Lowry. game compared to last year. Former Astro Jed Lowry at the plate. Hitting 281. Slider misses in. And you see Dallas kind of shake the head as if he's surprised he didn't get the call. Again, Manny Gonzalez is the umpire behind the plate tonight. Both pitchers have very quickly appeared frustrated. Pitch with that little cutter. Big hole on the right side for Lowry. Jed Lowry had some big swings for the Astros last year. And a one-two count now against Keichel. Thirty-two years of age now for Jed. Jed Lowry a West Coast guy from Salem Oregon. Dallas comes back with that slider. Lowry came up with the Boston Red Sox in 08. Four years with the Sox. Three with these Oakland A's now and a couple of years with the Astros. Two and two crisp always a threat to run. Ground ball up the middle Altuve's there feeds on to Correa on the move they'll get the four six three double play. So the Astros turn their first here in the first inning. A couple of days ago five double plays turned by the Astros. It was nice and easy good turn by the boys up the middle Jose Altuve. Nice little alley oop pass it looked like to Carlos Correa comes running across shows the good arm. Gotta dress it up every now and then. Very nicely set up by Altuve. So two down base is empty for Danny Valencia. And that is certainly the way Dallas Keuchel would like it. Yeah, Valencia's had some success against Dallas. 538 batting average and 13 at bats with two bombs. Guy that's had success around the league, too, 300 batting average, 12 dingers on the year. And Keichel falling behind here in the first inning. Not quite hitting the spots. Good to see him miss low, though, rather than up in the strike zone. There you go. Two and one the count. bit of first inning angst now for Dallas Keuchel. Left hander brings the pitch and it's fouled back pretty good pitch to handle right there for Danny Valencia. Valencia born in Miami he's 31 years of age. And attended the University of Miami. Seven years in the big leagues. 
second of lifetime 272 mark. But he has certainly bounced around. He's played with the Twins, A's, Blue Jays, Royals, Baltimore, and the Boston Red Sox. And he's down on strikes, so Keiko gets a punch out here in the first inning along with the double play. Faces just three, the Astros and A's. One inning of play, scoreless game. Root Sports is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, donating $100 for each Astros home run and $200 for each Correa home run to Houston's Children's Charity. And by Southwest, transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. If you were wondering how guys prepare for games, to the a great look at it. Jose Altuve, the voice. <laughs> and his best Backstreet Boy impression here. You guys saw this, didn't you? Devo! So that's how you get ready to get two, three, four hits a game, huh? Yeah, I was trying to respond, but, uh, you know, these guys really need to loosen up a little bit more. You know, it's too tight in that clubhouse. We go down there, nobody's smiling. They're intent on all the, you know, analytics and reading and stuff like that. I mean, let it loose, boys. Have some fun. Well, now that you've told them what to do, maybe we'll see a little more looseness. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty good from Jose, huh? I love that kid. Carlos Gomez hit the plate. Are we starting to see a, a Jose Altuve that's starting to talk and uh, be that leader on the team a little bit more? Well, he may be keen on him a little bit more, but uh, I, I think he is definitely one of those guys we knew about him being a leader just by the way he played. And now we're getting to see a little more vocal leader. And I thought it was a great opportunity last night with all the drama going on for him to step in and be that guy. Running in the seventh position. Left Strikeout of Carlos Gomez to start the inning. Two strikeouts Colby now Rasmus. for the left-hander Overton. One out for Colby Rasmus. Back in there getting a start against a left-hander. In the Major League debut of the left-hander Dylan Overton. We talked about he pitched pretty well, but he also, in facing the Angels, gave up home runs to Cole Calhoun, Mike Trout, and Albert Pujols, and that's part of what Blummer was talking about with the home runs allowed already early. 2-0 the count on Colby. I'll tell you what, Colby's going through it right now. We had a good conversation with him before the game, talking about it. And he was kind of ragging on me a little bit, and he's like, you missed this, this part of the game, don't you, Blummer? And I said, oh, man, not one bit. Towering drive out to left center field, not enough. Coco Crisp with the play, and the second out in the inning. Academy Sports and Outdoors. They're hitting homers for Houston. 
Most home runs versus Oakland on the current Astros roster. Evan Gaddis has eight. Jose Altuve with five. Castro and Rasmus with those five also. Marwin Gonzalez won last night, got him on the board with four. So Evan Gaddis at the plate. You mean you don't enjoy trying to battle your way out of slumps? Man. Rip down the left field side, hooking. That's a fair ball. And down into the corner. Third two out hit for the Astros tonight, but none have driven in a run. Gaddis in scoring position for the nine hitter Jake Marisnik. Yeah, I can honestly say I, I don't miss that part of the game where you're just getting abused left and right. We were talking about some of the pitches that Colby has seen, some tough pitches. Value in the ninth position. Evan Gaddis getting a chance with the left hander on the mound to go out there and do Jake some raking. He hits the Marisnik. athletics well. Good job with two outs putting himself in scoring position. First double for the Astros singles by Altuve and Correa in the first. And now Jake Marisnik he's hit in six straight and by the way Evan Gaddis is now carrying a four game hitting streak. Mention Altuve in that first inning base hit. He is at 350 now. It's kind of a spring training number I think. Daniel Murphy in the National League started the night at 352. Playing for the Washington Nationals. Altuve right on his heels for the Major League lead. Jake Marisnik in a good hitters count 2 and 0. And there's the changeup. And when you've got a pitcher who features the change with great confidence, that 2 0, the 2 1, those are counts where you can almost bank on seeing that pitch. And again, 2 and 2 the count. Yeah, he's not afraid to go to that thing, is he? Yeah, that appears to be the go-to pitch for Dylan Overton. Will he triple up on it right here in a 2-2 count? We'll see, and if he does, is Jake Marisnik able to adjust and handle that change? Comes back to the fastball, spots it well, and freezes Jake. And that'll do it. Three strikeouts now as Overton gets out of the second inning. Astro strand a man at second, scoreless after one and a half.
here tonight. Game two in Oakland. Astros and A's still looking for the first run of the ball game. Yeah, there are more. They're all over the place for the Oakland A's. Four, five, six coming up against Dallas Keuchel. Not the sharpest first inning for Dallas, and yet he faced just three hitters, got a double play and a strikeout. Chris Davis now at the plate. 255 batting average, 23 home runs. And we saw some of the raw power last night going opposite field and rather handily. Towering fly ball, routine in right field for Springer. First out of the inning. Let's check in with Julia. Thanks, Ash. Join the Astros at Minute Maid Park this Friday as they take on the Angels. 10,000 fans will receive an Astros door presented by Goya. For more information, visit Astros.com or call 1-877-9-Astros. Thank you, Julia. Fedora and I, we just had, was that a Fedora night up in Seattle? Yes. They are popular. Dave Sims, the broadcaster for the Seattle Mariners that's pretty well known for wearing those. One out. Keichel finds the strike zone. Marcus Simeon at the plate, another one of those youngsters that can really slam it. 20 dingers, 48 RBIs. Keiko right out in front, spotting the knees. So much praise for Marcus Simeon and the improvement on the defensive side. And yet we saw him last night. Does not make a good throw at all on a routine play. Ron Washington, the guy that gets so much of the credit. We didn't see the best of throws on that play on the Carlos Correa ground ball earlier earlier in this game either. Yeah, you're right. I'm not sure he has the classic shortstop arm. Now, now Correa has every bit of it. Bob Melvin talking things over and he's got a tough assignment I think the second half of the season. And yet that said the Oakland A's have played very tough against the Houston Astros in 11 games the Astros have won six. There's that guy that has all the tools to be as good as anybody. Right on the hands little looper Altuve coming on will play it on a hop get it to Marwin who can't make the play and we'll have to see how this is ruled. Looked like a good throw to Marwin. He had to dash back to the bag. Marwin broke for the ball. Off the bat, Marwin broke for the baseball, and therefore he was late getting to first base. Altuve did the best he could to lead Marwin, but unable to do it. So Simeon's aboard one way or the other. Now we'll see how they rule this. They have ruled an E3, and I was concerned that Altuve was going to get stuck with an error on the play. He made a good play. So Marwin in that bid to break for the ball and then sprint back to the bag just not able to get his his glove on it. First error on the night as Billy Butler's at the plate. Watch that play once again. Yeah, you can't see it in the replay but on the on the play when the ball was hit Marwin was running towards the baseball. When he realized he wasn't going to be able to catch it in the air. He broke back towards first base. Just not enough time to get there and read the throw from Jose Altuve. Keichel now falls behind on Butler. DH with a 250 batting average and just two home runs. Simeon has stolen seven bags and eight tries. So Keichel has to be quick with him and Keichel with that quick little slide step doesn't yield many attempts against him. Yeah it's really an asset for Dallas Keichel to be able to keep that runner at first base allows that double play to stay in order. And Billy Butler's a good guy to double up. Another peek at Marwin Gonzalez at first base. That's a long way off the bag and then the break. Really makes it tough. Yeah, now Tuve's got to throw that ball. If he waits any longer, Marcus Simeon beats it out. Three and one now on Butler. 
And we'll see if Marcus Simeon has any thoughts of running. Butler's made one All Star squad that came in 2012 while a member of the Kansas City Royals. Takes ball four, so Dallas Keuchel with his second walk of the night. He walked Coco Crisp as he let off the game for the A's back in the first. Runners at first and second, one out. And right fielder Jake Smolinski comes to the plate. Jake Smolinski. A's with some speed at second. Not much speed at all at first base. I like to call that American League speed. It's actually a. It's a very nice description of what's going on down at first. Oh and one on Smolinski. Twenty seven years of age. Everybody's talking about at the All Star break having these skills competitions for baseball players. Wouldn't you like to see a Billy Butler, Albert Pujols? <laughs> Give me some other ones to throw in there for a foot race. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, and I thought you were talking home run derby. Little tapper foul by Smolinski. Oh, and to the count. Would it qualify as a race? Well, we saw Albert Pujols, and he's swinging the bat well lately. He's still driving in runs. Yeah, he is driving in runs. Driving some home runs as well, but his ability to run has just almost completely shut down. We only got five years left on that contract. It'll be fine. Sounds pretty good. Artie Moreno is probably thinking the very same thing. Fly ball down the left field side, shallow as Colby Rasmus comes on. He'll make the catch. Two outs. Dallas Keuchel now tries to get through things as he faces the eight spot with Ryan Healy. We're going to get a chance to look at our Lexus defensive rankings again. That numerical number on the left is based on some data that we've dug up. The red light on the right is my opinion of what these guys can do, both with their athleticism, their arm, and their accuracy. Don't want to run on those guys. Ryan Healy has shown some pop, hit a couple of balls very well last night. Carlos Gomez went up against the wall in center field to haul one down. The two outs in the inning coming on fly balls. Ground ball left side and through, and that's going to bring the runner to the plate, Simeon. The throw to the plate, and they got him. And there's that arm from Colby Rasmus. Jeff Blum talking about it. You don't want to run on these guys. And Rasmus shows you why. Nice job at the plate by Evan Gaddis. And Dallas Keuchel, the beneficiary of the fine defense. We're still scoreless after two.
have some outstanding defense behind you. Dallas Keuchel will tell you that right now. The base hit into left field and Colby takes over. Good aggressive job going to the baseball. Fundamentally sound with those feet and a great strong throw to Evan Gaddis home plate. And that's why Jeff Plum says you don't run on him or the other outfielders for the Astros tonight. Just don't do it. We're in the third inning top of the order George Springer leads it off strikeout victim in the first and has an 0 2 count here in the third inning. Twice Dylan Overton has spotted that inside edge very well on George. Astros have seen a lot of change ups and some well spotted heaters. And George down on strikes for the second time. One out in the third inning. It'll bring up Marwin Gonzalez. Two pretty uncomfortable at bats for George Springer. That one was a cutter down and in. A lot of times you're heading back to the dugout at this point thinking, I need to change my plan here. Let's start taking some good swings early. Getting back to that throw from Colby Rasmus. It's been tweeted out that it was 95.3 miles per hour. Hmm. Stat cast. Let's get him on the hill. Hey, you give him a crow hop, he'll bring it. I don't know if Colby's impressed. I think he's wanting 100. Plenty of game left. Well, it was also spotted beautifully and gave Evan Gaddis a great shot to apply the tag. Marwin falls behind in the count 0 and 2. Dylan Overton. Finding that strike zone steadily right now. Dallas Keuchel has allowed just one hit but a couple of walks. Hook down the left field side back to the seats. Stays at 0 and 2. And watch your Hagen does. Oh, kid, nice move. Went over there, rallied for the ball, found it, handed it off to that young man right there. Beautiful. Overton back to the plate. Missing in good spots right now. All is good when the ice cream survives. Let's see how Tuve waits on deck. Timeout now called at the plate. Whose fault was it? Nobody's well, going to claim it. When nobody has been pointed to. I would say that Marwin might have been the guy asking. Again that one two offering. Line drive just up over Simeon at short. Solid base hit from Marwin Gonzalez. That's the fourth Houston hit of the night. Marwin aboard with one out with Jose Altuve coming to the plate. Houston Methodist brings us tonight's league leaders. Most consecutive road games reaching base. Ash was talking about this earlier in the ball game. 34 straight. It's an active streak for Jose Altuve. Jose and the other Al usual Tuve. suspects Bagwell Cruz Biggio. Yeah that's fairly predictable but how about those numbers for Bagwell. Gosh. Jose Altuve hitting a cool 350. That's an active figure. Lines a fastball down the right side. Back to the seats. Altuve going at it aggressively and it is really paying off. Altuve leading Mookie Betts and Xander Bogarts when you talk about hits in the American League. 25 doubles on the year, a couple of triples. We mentioned the 15 home runs. 
He's driven in 54. He's just doing it all. And again, leading the league in stolen bases at 25. Ball and a strike on Jose. Drilled into left center field. Hit number two on the night for Jose. Into third base. Marwin Gonzalez into second. And a double for Jose Altuve. That's number 26 for Jose. Professional hitter Jose Altuve. Trying to shoot that gap in left center field. Now it's a good strong line drive in that gap. And we both know as well as Astro fans at home watching that you can run on this outfield. Josh Reddick not out there in right field, but Coco Crisp in center and Chris Davis in left do not have very good arms at all. Altuve has that ability to kind of cut off a swing a little bit to get the barrel to the pitch that's in a bit. It just does everything. And, and for me, it's not so much cutting off the swing as he is so good at bringing the hands in. Yeah, and, and that's really what I'm trying to say. Just shortening things. He can he can make the adjustment mid swing. It feels like. Runners at second and third. Carlos Correa at the plate. That's the way you would design it. Correa leading the club with 58 ribbies and a great time to add to that total. We're in the third inning. Well, Julia talked about it as we started this ball game hitting in that four hole. He's expected to drive these runs in. And he takes a strike on a 1 0. And he took the fastball right there. Ball and a strike. Left hander Dylan Overton in his third major league start. And now on the changeup that's not close, Carlos offers. So five Houston hits and we're just in the third inning. Nothing yet on the board. Carlos Correa had a single and a stolen base in the first inning. Overton from the stretch. Little dribbler first base side coming to the plate is Marwin and he is called out at the plate and Marwin thought he was safe but McBride able to get a tag to him and so that little dribbler does not produce a run AJ wants to have people back in the clubhouse take a look at this one I thought that was a pretty good play by McBride how about the glove flip from Overton ball just nubbed out in front. Marwin Gonzalez aggressive on that play. Oh, is the hand on the plate? Hand on the plate. Yeah, that's interesting. Not sure if there's enough there to call. There's our mattress firm Super Mo. Look at that pick. He's blocking home plate too, but I think that arm gets Marwin right there, and that's enough to get the out. Yeah, the Astros will not challenge that. So a costly second out runners at first and third. It's Altuve at third base. It's a fielder's choice enabling Correa to reach. And now it's in the hands of Valbuena. And he drills one into right center field. Solid base hit. Altuve will score. Correa streaks to third. And there's your two out hit for an RBI. One nothing Houston. Great piece of hitting. I love the aggressiveness too. Looking to swing early in the count when you're probably going to see the best pitch you're going to see in the at bat. Well done. Now batting, now batting. Number 30. Luis Valbuena is turning himself into a force. So on hit number six tonight the Astros get on the board. That he is.
Guys, that win is looking really comfortable against lefties. I actually asked AJ about this today, and he said, you know, a big reason why he's having better success here recently is because he's staying within the strike zone. That helps him with left-handed pitching, but it also helps AJ when he's putting that lineup together. You know, today they're going all righties against Dallas Keiko. AJ likes to stick a lefty in there every once in a while to give the pitcher a different look, helps things out uh, as far as just how they, they approach the pitcher. And it doesn't hurt when that lefty Val Buena is swinging it so well. Of course, Colby Rasmus also in there to Julia's point. Carlos Gomez gets tied up, pops one shallow into right field. Smolensky comes on and makes the play, and that'll do it. The Astros pick up three hits in the inning. Most importantly, they pick up a run lead at one nothing over the A's. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By Lexus, the new 2016 Lexus ES and ES Hybrid, it's next level luxury. And by HEB, no store does more than my HEB. One nothing Houston to the bottom of the third inning. Dallas Keuchel will face the nine hitter Matt McBride. That second inning for the A's ended with Ryan Healy coming up with a base hit to left field. They tried to score. Marcus Simeon came to the plate trying to challenge Colby Rasmus. Big mistake on the part of the A's. Keichel gets in front 0 1. Matt McBride hasn't been around long. Softly lines to shortstop. Correa hauls it in out number one. It's impossible to hear the name McBride and not think about Fake McBride. Fake, fake McBride, yeah. One out top of the order. Coco Crisp comes to the plate. And when you hear the name Coco Crisp, you think of Fruity Pebbles. There you go. I wondered where you'd go there. Good job by Gaddis to knock down that strike. Just keep it in play. That's all it's all about. <laughs> I'm just joking. Sorry. <laughs> oh, one pitch. One and one. Yeah, I'm good with when Dallas misses, missing low like that, down around the edges. Leaves the breaking ball up but gets a swing and a miss one and two. Coco took a swing at that curveball like he was looking for it. And like he wanted to hit it a little further than the fences are placed. Let's see what this pitch is. It's a little bit better breaking ball. It's in the vicinity we're talking about when he misses down. 
off the plate. I don't know if you saw the sign from Evan Gaddis, but boy, he puts it there for his pitcher to see, and there's no missing it. Gaddis wanted that fastball up. Dallas missed low. It's two and two. Coco Crisp has gone three straight games without a hit. Walked in the first. He's 0 for his last 13. Always fun to watch a catcher. I enjoy when men are on second base and you get to see the series of signs. Do you find yourself trying to pick them off a little bit? Yeah, every time I'm out there. Three and two the count now. Some teams are a little more aggressive with picking those signs. There's actually guys I've, I've played with that did not want to know what pitch was coming. I think a lot of hitters, I, I would say when I was playing, more hitters than not did not want to know. Hit in the air to right field. Springer comes on. He'll make the grab. George laid back for a moment and then able to come on. <laughs> Dallas Keuchel with a couple of outs here in the third uh, inning. Jed Lowry comes to the plate. Jed Lowry. Switch hitter. Lowry grounded into a double play his first at bat. He's just going to settle for a double here it would appear. Down in the corner Colby gets it back in. Two out double for Jed Lowry. He did not want to have any two out flashbacks like we had last night but Jed Lowry put a good swing on this pitch down and in not trying to do too much. Just get the barrel to it. Gets himself in scoring position with two outs. For Jed Lowry, that's just his 11th double of the year. Hasn't hit for a lot of extra bases. One triple, a couple of home runs. Danny Valencia stands in. We've got some thump in the heart here with Valencia, Davis, and Simeon. And that's something Dallas did a lot last year working in. And I think once again Dallas Keuchel might have been upset about not getting a call working in. Strike is called on the swing. It's a ball and a strike. Nice pitch. And Valencia probably looking on that inside corner but that cutter just tracing him kept coming after him and he couldn't couldn't stop the swing. And Dallas works in again at 90 miles an hour. One and two the count. You know, the book for the moment for Dallas Keuchel against Danny Valencia would appear to be working in. And this one gets away from Gaddis. Likely a pass ball as moving into third base is Lowry. Leave that runner out there. Put that one away. A bit of a clank. Now I've said many times that for a catcher, and I assume it applies to other guys as well, the ball on your glove side is the tougher one. Backhand side, easy as could be. Lowry at third now, a 2 2 count. And he swings on that slider in the dirt. No tag needed as Valencia walks away from the play. Gaddis will tag him anyway, and that'll do it. Strikeout number two for Dallas Keuchel. He gets out with a man at third through three. It's a 1 0 Houston lead.
Astros lead it. We go to the top of the fourth inning. For Houston, Colby Rasmus leads it off, followed by Evan Gaddis and Jake Marisnik. 7 8 9 in the Strohs lineup. Left hander Dylan Overton on the hill. The Astros have touched him for six hits to pick up that one run. Will be offers on that hanging breaking ball. Rasmus fly to center field in the second. Will be now 0 for his last 13. Hits it hard but hooks it down the right side. And that fairly close to home run distance. Some Oakland A's fans hanging out by themselves there. Oh. And the generosity in yeah. this ballpark today is unprecedented. It's very nice. 0 2 pitch. They're not ripping into the drums, they're handing out souvenirs. I've been seeing you rocking to the drums here this evening. I think I got a little more rhythm than some of the guys out in those bleachers <laughs> here. <laughs> Man. Here we go. Astro fans feel that's one of the greatest traditions in all of baseball. <laughs> Drive to center field. Coco Crisp. Just a few steps from where he starts. And Colby flies out. Let's check in with Julia. Thank you, Ash. We have the Chevy Stroh poll for you today. Make sure to go to Twitter. Vote on our Twitter page, Root Sports SW. Who has the best facial hair in baseball? Is it our own Dallas Keuchel, Daniel Morgan, Marlon Gonzalez, who always has something going on, or Jason Worth? How, where, where? Where's Colby? Where's Colby? Where is my counterpart, Alan Ashby? <laughs> <laughs> Kidding me? Line to left field, great diving play. Chris Davis absolutely robs one here from Evan Gaddis. And Gaddis was shooting for a second straight hit on the night. And I appreciate your effort, by the way, Plummer. Oh, it's not even close. Oh, I know. You should be at the top of the list. <laughs> yeah. Jason Worth and Dallas Keiko would just, they wouldn't even bother Jake, listening to you. What if Keiko and Margos and Credit because they keep it so well trimmed and beautiful looking. Worth has given us a Chewbacca impression. Uh oh, oh, that goes flying. Oh it's my gosh. right on top of that third base dugout and into the seats. Nice catch, Bidge. Hopefully, his wife oh is boy. okay. My goodness, that thing skipped off the top of the dugout right into the bleachers. Looks like everybody's okay. Thank goodness. I just hate to see this. This right here is when things get bad. Yeah. Big proponent of the screens down the sides. Yeah, Man. Not just for foul balls, but uh, we've seen some bats go flying here in recent days. Oh, and one the count on Jake. Batting with two outs, bases empty. Yeah, I was thinking Evan Gaddis was left off that list. I think Evan, given a little time, could put some pressure on anybody. I don't know. Colby got rid of the chin curtain. Might, have, might take him off that list. There's that change again, and Jake has had a tough time waiting back on that. And then when he starts looking for it, the fastball slips by. Dallas is going to be one of the leaders in the clubhouse. There's no doubt. Because of the beard? Oh, because of a lot of reasons. The beard among them. And Riznik for a second time tonight. Down on strikes out recorded down at first base. A 1-2-3 inning. This Davis with that great play in left field. Otherwise, maybe the Astros have a little something going. 1-0 Houston.
Yeah, I don't know. I like it. Get your votes in. One nothing Houston. It's the bottom of the fourth inning. Four five six coming up for these Oakland A's. Chris Davis leads it off. Just made that great play in left field. Evan Gaddis probably some kind words for him. Dallas Keuchel trying to protect this one nothing lead. Leaves the slider or is that just a little cut job. Nobody Carlos Gomez done it. Full helmet launch. He can do some ball launching as well. 23 long balls this year has a 1 1 count. And it's nothing new for Chris Davis. A ball on that right side. One ball and two strikes. Davis, three years with the Milwaukee Brewers, he had 27 home runs last year, 22 the year before. Just in his fourth year of the big leagues and 83 home runs already. It's that easy. There we go. We've been seeing a lot of Astros fans everywhere the club has gone. Keichel with a 3 2 count. More of those than he would like. The Astros start the evening 50 and 43, four and a half back of Texas. Marcus Simeon waiting on deck. Seattle had a big comeback win last night. They're just three back of Houston. Chopper goes foul outside the bag. Hawk Harrelson had a invigorating call on that <laughs> loss for the White Sox, didn't he? Oh man, that was a classic. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I heard it. High and deep. Autograph session out there in the bullpen. And Keiko gets him. Down under the knees, but a strikeout. Third on the night for Dallas. The Astros play the Yankees July 25th through the 27th at Minute Maid Park. Get your tickets today by visiting Astros.com. Calling 1-877-9-ASTROS. Is your American League East as it presently stands? Orioles on top. Who's your pick this year in that division? It was going to be the Blue Jays. I still think they have a chance if they get that lineup going. But their pitching has been extremely good. Was going to be. Does that mean you're sitting on the fence? Well, they're not doing very good right now, so I don't want to commit to them. No, I think the Blue Jays are going to end up winning this thing. The Orioles just go bombing away, though. They do hit some home runs, don't they? Man, I mean, those are three very good teams at the top of that uh, Eastern Division. Hot shot to third. Balbuena, quick bobble, but able to get the out. Second out is Simeon is thrown out. It'll bring up the DH Billy Butler. You know, I thought the, the Boston Red Sox Billy as we watch this ground ball hit by Simeon and Billy the play Butler. by Valbuena. I thought the Boston Red Sox just had too much offense going on. I mean, they're pitching. I mean, it's to not to win. Yeah, I mean, there's what are they all averaging close to six runs a game? I think they've been over six over at times, six. but yeah, but it's tough to maintain that throughout the course of a season. But they need to maintain that because their uh, starting staff has been giving up so many runs. You know, I think of Baltimore in that ballpark that they play in and home runs are going to fly for the home team and for the visiting clubs. It's hard to pitch well in that park, I would think. Maybe we should check in with Jake Arrieta who went to Wrigley and was able to become a dominant pitcher. He only pitches on days when it's blowing in. Maybe that's the deal. But early I in doubt the year. He's, he's too good. Yeah, it doesn't matter where that wind's blowing. He is something. 2-0 was fouled back as Butler has a good swing. 
I know you've been to Wrigley early on in the season, Ooh. April, first half of May. It is nearly impossible. But you get some of those summer days, winds blowing out, it's hard to keep the fly ball in the yard. Of course, those are the days when you ground out four times. And Biz has been all over the ballpark, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a chameleon, too, a different uniform. Well, we've said he did it all. Three balls and a strike. Dallas trying to avoid a third walk on the evening. It's ripped but foul down the left side. So another one of those three two counts 67 pitches for Dallas. Two outs here in the fourth inning. I imagine the A's thought they were getting more power from Billy Butler when they brought him over. He takes strike three. So down on strikes Billy Butler two in the inning four on the evening for Dallas Keuchel. A one two three frame we played four and the Astros on top one zip. A couple, couple words here and there, but you know we smoothed it over, and just how it is when you're in a competitive game, and um, and everyone wants to win so bad that you know sometimes it, it gets out of hand. And but you know, like I said, it's it's over. We're done with it, and you know, we're going to move on and, and play tomorrow. That's Mike Fires with the Geico quote of the day. Things unraveling for him last night and showing that he was visibly upset with AJ Hinch on the mound, and then again in the dugout, but. Like he said in his soundbite, uh, quickly wanting to move on from that. Uh, obviously, a very competitive guy, as all these guys are. It's a long season. They spend a lot of time with each other and around each other, and these things do happen on all all teams. Uh, but last night, he said it wasn't professional of him to to show those emotions in the dugout in front of everyone. That's something that he needs to work on. And he was told by his teammates as well. And guys, I, I got the chance to talk to some of the the team, including uh, Jose Altuve. We've talked about. Ash. George Springer hammers one to center back at the wall. See ya. Number 21 for George Springer. And that'll double the lead to two to nothing. Well, a much more aggressive George Springer in at bat number three after a couple of strikeouts. And he is so impressive. Julia was down there talking about anger, and all of a sudden, George Springer snapped on that baseball. Good job of redirecting that anger. Sometimes it can be a gift. Right here, he takes it out on this baseball. Mm. That is pure. Yeah, we actually speculated after the most recent at bat by George, a couple of strikeouts to start the night, kind of get deep into the the at bat and then some tough pitches. And boy, he did change his theory. Went up there and let it fly. 
Yeah, they will talk it over, and maybe that's the way to go after business. The assistant hitting coach Alonzo Powell giving some love to George. Marwin Gonzalez at the plate, one for two. Marwin lined out to left field in the first inning and then singled in the third. Or Alonzo Powell went over to him and said, See, it's about time you start listening to me. <laughs> Maybe that's it. He said, Please don't ever take out that strength of yours on any of us in here. Hit in the air, center field, towering shot coming on is Coco Crisp. And the first out here in the inning. Another look at that home run by George Springer. Number 27, Jose Altuve. Prodigious. Cool evening in Oakland, and when it's like that, you've really got to hit one to get it out. Jose Altuve, two for two. He has a single and a double. Just keeps that head right down at the baseball. Takes a strike. One and one on Jose. Batting average at 351. Hits it to center and well. Crisp going back at the track and unable to come up with it. Altuve to second base and he's going to keep on coming. The throw in not in time. We'll see how this is ruled. It's a triple and Jose Altuve has a single double and triple as he starts his night. Ooh, going in the natural cycle order. Uh, we might see some swings that's coming out of his heels. That was a taser to center field and I love the fact that Altuve once this ball is on the ground he is off the races daring these outfielders to throw him out running right in the face of Coco Crisp to get that triple. I think he had that on his mind as he went around second. Absolutely. It's the way I felt. So the Astros will force the A's to bring the infield in Altuve at third one out for Carlos Correa. Correa has singled and stolen a base. And grounded into a fielder's choice. That was Marwin Gonzalez trying to score back in the third inning. He made a very nice play at the plate as Marwin was tagged out. And Carlos takes a strike. Pretty good changeup away. Not too sure early in the count unless you're looking for that pitch to expand. And they just miss inside. A ball and a strike. The attendance tonight, 15,143. What's tonight like? Milkshake night or some kind of uh, root beer float? That's what it is. Okay. There's a fundraising or charity event for adolescent diabetes going on. Hit to right center field in the gap, coming over and making the play. Smolinski tagging Altuve. He will score easily. Sack fly for Carlos Correa. And the Astros lead at three nothing RBI number fifty nine. Yeah we're not asking uh, Carlos Correa to get knocks every time he goes out there but to do what he just did right there is what you need. Runner at third base less than two outs looking for a pitch that he can drive into the outfield knowing he doesn't have to hit an extremely deep fly ball to score a guy like Jose Altuve did a fantastic job in that four hole. Jose Altuve three for three. Carlos Correa driving in his 59th. These are some of the things that really turn this Astros club into a tough club to beat on any given night. And then you've got Dallas Keuchel shutting down the A's through four. Val Buena in the air to left field. Davis comes on. And that'll do it in the fifth inning. The Astros add two. Led by George Springer with some muscles going at it right here.
21st on the year. Altuve has a single, double, and triple. Dallas Keuchel is shutting down the Oakland A's. It's 3-0 Astros. We move to the bottom of the fifth inning. For the A's, 7-8-9 coming up. Jake Smolinski leads it off. Followed by Ryan Healy and Matt McBride. Keuchel looking for that call. One and zero on Smolinski, who has flied to left field in his only at bat. Takes one at the knees. Smolinski hitting 293. Came over from the Texas Rangers. Shift on three infielders on the left side. There's a good job to stay away from anything being hit through that right side. Keichel has struck out four tonight. Eight Houston hits, two for the A's. Dallas Keichel, 11 quality starts now in his last 19 outings. Seven of his last nine. And again, the Astros have won his last five starts. And now three and two. It's really the first time for me I've actually seen him pitch aggressively on that inside corner. Both the cutter and the straight fastball. Tries to come in with that cutter and misses inside. Good time for us to look at our Ford spray chart on Dallas Keuchel. His breaking ball. His bar graphs on the left with the opponent batting average against it. Middle zone is going to be out of zone whiff percentage and the swing and strike percentage on the right hand side. So Dallas works with a man aboard. And misses down and in. Ryan Healy at the plate. Singled in the second inning, one of the two Oakland hits tonight. The other, a double by Jed Lowry in the third. Dallas Keuchel in left handed history for the Astros as he evens the count at a ball and a strike. He ranks sixth in Astros. Club history for left handers trails Billy Wagner sixth in strikeouts trails Billy Wagner by 67 Billy Wagner in fifth place. That's hard to believe. He pitched about the fifth of the innings that Dallas Keuchel was thrown. Four guys in front of Billy Wagner and I'm trying to think of all the left handers who might be in that spot. Jim Deshays. Well maybe so. Got him. Bob Nepper comes to mind. Swing and a miss off speed. Keichel had him fooled. We'll look at wins by lefties as Keichel gets the strikeout for the out, first out of the inning. Yeah, Bob Nepper is at the top of that wins list. I wouldn't have guessed Wandy would be that high. Mike Hampton put together one of the best seasons I've seen for the club. There's JD. One out as Healy's down on strikes. Five punch outs for Keuchel. Matt McBride at the plate. Eighty pitches now for Dallas. There's the inside corner. 
all these right hand hitters are anticipating that ball to cut. That's when Dallas Keiko goes to the straight fastball keeps it on that inside corner. Hitter gives up on it stays right there for a strike. Gonna come right back there. Hmm. Well that's making a really good pitch and that. Inside corner can be the the tougher side to get calls on. But it is nice seeing Dallas work consistently in there. There it's called two and two. And right at 90 miles an hour. McBride the nine hitter. Coco Crisp waits on deck. Stays at two and two. Keichel's picked up one double play tonight. That back in the first inning, grounded into by Jed Lowry. And now three and two. Dallas has had certainly more full counts tonight than he would like. And yet, nothing on the board for the Oakland A's. Tapper at the plate. They're in the fifth inning in Anaheim. Angels hosting the Rangers. Texas on top 5 4. Feel like it's scoreboard watching time yet? I think it always is. Yeah, that's fair enough. That curiosity is always always there. It's Tim Lincecum on the hill for the Angels against Kyle Loesch of the Rangers. Starting to see some new names in the rotation. Runner goes, pitch a strike, throw down on a hop, and they got him. Second double play on the night. Strike him out, throw him out. Evan Gaddis gets his man. So that'll do it in the fifth inning. Just three hitters faced through five. Astros on top. Three nothing. MD Anderson presents this moment in history. Dallas Keiko throws nine shutout innings, allowing just two hits as the Astros defeat Oakland 5 4. That in 12 innings came on April 24th last season. You hope not to go that far, but Dallas looking for another win tonight. Throw a complete game shutout and get a no decision. Congrats. Pitching is fun. Thanks for playing. Jeez. So on top three nothing. 
Here in the inning, Carlos Gomez, Colby Rasmus, and Evan Gaddis. Six, seven, eight for the Astros. It's one and one on Carlos. He is struck out and flied out. And that heater from Overton right there at the knees. One and two. Gomez hitting 211 as he gets a piece. 8 2 Astros in the hits column. They picked up a run in the third inning, two more in the fifth. In the third, it was Luis Valbuena with two outs. Solid base hit to drive in that first run. Gomez down on strikes for the second time tonight. He is 0 for 3, out number one. Yeah, this month of July has not been nice to Carlos Gomez. Granted, it's only the 15th game, but we are halfway through this month, and he is hitting a buck 57. Yeah, it's kind of back to the way things started the year for Carlos. Believe it or not, well, similar to that month of May is the one that really crushed him. Hit a 136 during the month of May. But yeah, that's uh, some disappointing production. At a minor league rehab, came back and played better. Like you say, it's been tough keeping that going. Will be Rasmus at the plate. Colby has flied out twice, 0 for his last 14 now. Shift on. Jed Lowry playing in shallow right field. In talking to Colby, he is having those struggles that you were talking about. I believe now 0 for 14. Maybe 15 on the on the stretch that he's on, but he is consciously thinking about trying to go up the middle of the other way with this shift being played on him. It's tied up as he pops it up on the left side. Healy into foul territory to make the play. Two down in the inning. Number one. Another check in with Julia is due right now. Thank you, Ash. I'm going to talk about that Gaddis gnome you're looking at. Join the Astros at Minute Maid Park this Saturday as they take on the Angels. 10,000 fans will receive that Gaddis gnome right there, courtesy of Academy of Sports and Outdoors. For more info, visit Astros.com or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Julia, are you going to have a, a Gaddis gnome on your front lawn? Absolutely. Everybody needs a gnome for their home. Especially one that looks like that. July 23rd. Ground ball left side. Evan Gaddis going to take a good throw from Simeon and not in time. Evan Gaddis with that triple speed able to leg it out. Two out single for Evan. Hit number nine for the Strohs. Good hustle by Evan. Smell that hit. We know he's got the wheels. 11 triples last year. Again, Simeon getting tested on that backhand yeah, side. Yet to make a throw all the way across that diamond. Not easy to do. But right about there, you can see Evan Gaddis smelling that base hit. Got it. Evans had a shot at three hits tonight. He's now two for three in the fourth inning. He lined out to left field, took a heck of a play by Chris Davis to get him. And now Jake Marisna go for two with a couple of strikeouts. The changeup has just left. Jake reaching and feeling for the baseball. Slip back onto the interstate, 197 the batting average. Guy who hit nine home runs a year ago. Just one long ball now. We're in the middle of July. Tries to bunt his way aboard. 0 oh 2 on Jake. Seattle and Chicago the White Sox tied at one. They are in the bottom of the sixth inning. Red Laurie is homeward for the White Sox. Robinson Cano number 22. That for the M's. There goes Gaddis. They've got him picked and caught stealing. That'll go one three six on the caught stealing. And that'll do it for Houston in the sixth as just three come to the plate. 
Through five and a half, three nothing Houston. Astros on top of the Athletics 3 0 here in the second game of the series. Trying to even things at a game apiece. And we keep finding the Astros fans. They're spotted all around the ballpark here in Oakland. I love it. It's a good look, isn't it? Man, yeah. And they have been proudly wearing their orange. Top of the order for the A's here in the sixth against Dallas Keuchel. Coco Crisp has walked and flied out. When he walked in the first inning, he was promptly doubled up on a ground ball hit by Jed Lowry. Keichel falls behind 2 0. Oh. I would say not as sharp as last time out for Dallas, and yet finding a way to slide through this game. Ground ball left side Val Buena the vacuum and out number one. Again let's check in with Julia. Thanks a lot Ash it's time to announce the winner of our Chevy Stroh poll today. We asked you about facial hair who has the best in the league. The starting pitchers were in the race. Here's who you voted for. <laughs> Surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I think even Julia's surprised. Good old Dallas Keuchel. The beard wins it, huh? Something tickled Julia down there. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry, guys. Yes, congrats to Dallas Keuchel. <laughs> you want to finish that story? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> one ball and one strike. Jed Lowry at the plate. Here's the left left hander. Dylan Overton and has not been helped a whole lot by his offense but Dallas Keuchel with a 1 1 count one out here in the sixth inning 93rd pitch of the night Yankees have defeated the Orioles tonight 7 1 Starlin Castro and Chase Headley with home runs. Andy Valdi picked up the win his eighth of the year. Carlos Correa with the play. A couple of ground ball outs. That's Dallas Keuchel. Let that infield work and Correa able to get the second out of the frame. It'll bring up three hitter Danny Valencia. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We are at the Astrodome. Is that, uh, that what we've got? The Astrodome. That is good stuff. <laughs> what was Even that? The, the stadium knew that. It was one of the ribbons going around the uh, decks here, and uh, they knew who really won that stroke <laughs> And Not even close as the 
Breaking balls in there for a called strike. Danny Valencia has struck out twice tonight. That's here where at the Oakland Coliseum <laughs> brought to you by <laughs> the old Hugo. It's the Hugo Dome, huh? Yeah. For today. Wait, the Hugo Seum. <laughs> Hugo Seum. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to pick up an old dilapidated stuff and have it sponsor this place. You're saying Hugos are dilapidated, huh? Do they even exist anymore? <laughs> Line drive base hit Valencia stings it. Jake's going to have to get it back in quickly. Big turn by Valencia. He'll hold with a single hit number three for the A's. Two out single brings up Chris Davis. You don't want to miss a pitch through the heart of the plate on Davis. Ninety seven pitches that bullpen for the Astros still quiet. Davis has flied out and struck out. There you go spotting it at the knees. Oh and won the count. Minnesota tops Detroit the Tigers go to forty nine and forty five they're in play in that wild card bid. 6 2 that final as the Twins win it. Ground ball hit to Correa. He'll feed on to Altuve, and the force play will do it for the A's here in the sixth inning. No runs a hit as they leave a man. Dallas Keiko through six innings on top, 3 0. Telecast is presented by authority of Houston Astros LLC and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Houston Astros LLC. And we're back in Oakland Astros on top three nothing to the seventh we go Jake Marisnik leads it off. He was at the plate when Evan Gaddis was thrown out to end the sixth inning. Caught stealing for Evan. Overton still working it. He has pitched well enough to stay on for the A's. Nine hits allowed to the Astros. Jose Altuve has three of those, a single, double, and triple. George Springer has hit his 21st long ball of the year. And Luis Valbuena got it all started back in the third inning, a two out single to drive in that first run of the ball game. Jake takes just inside. It's two and one. Talk about somebody that needs to get something going. Jake Marisnik. It's actually hitting 320 in the month of July. Getting some at bats against left handers the Astros have been facing here recently. Three and one on Jake.
good opportunity to put the barrel on one here for Jake. Gets a fastball out over the plate and simply fouls it back. And so a full count now. The A's will get a left hander loose. Daniel Coulomb is that left hander working in the pen. We were talking about him before the game. Yes, we were. What'd you say his name is? You, you told me. I'm glad you <laughs> went over there and asked. Coulomb. Daniel Coulomb. Now the guy's working under Bob Melvin. Want to stay with the left hander going against the Astros. Oh, nice play, Mark. Your work, pregame work, is paying off. Yeah. Kids here in Oakland responding to that early work. Brain trust of the Oakland A's. They do a lot of pregame work with their guys. Jake stays alive. Two pitch to Jake Marisnik, and again he gets a piece. Hundred and six pitches for over ten. George Springer waiting on deck. Yeah, tonight's outing for Overton is not going to hurt his cause to be in this rotation. Ground ball up the middle, backhanded Lowry. He'll throw on the move. And able to get Jake Marisnik. Let's take a look at that home run once again from George Springer back in the fifth. Big blast on a fastball to dead center field here at the Hugo Coliseum in Oakland. Guess what? That was George Springer's 21st home run on the season. That is a new career season high for George Springer. Most home runs as an outfielder. Going to do it, by the way, for Dylan Overton as the A's go to the bullpen. But that's kind of again we mentioned it the other night. A little surprising to me that there aren't more home runs from the outfielders. Well, some of those guys are rotating between DH and outfield. So Coulomb comes on for the A's. He'll work it with one out here in the seventh inning and trailing three nothing. We'll be right back. Top of the 7 3 nothing Astros lead it. MLB Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices, including a free subscription to AdBat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions may apply. Visit MLB.tv for more details. Ash. Springer on the first pitch drills it to center and a great running grab by Coco Crisp. The George Springer. 
has loosened it up and he is hitting it now the last couple of bats. Tell you what. If he'd have gotten a hit on that we were going to have Julia talk through all of George's at bats the rest of the year. Yes she led into that home run the previous at bat. Number nine. Marwin. It's like a pretty good play on the run from Coco Crisp. Keep George Springer off the base pass. That was not Bo Jackson going up against the wall. No. Very slender Nacho, not uh, Bo Jackson <laughs> out there. What would you field. say about nachos? <laughs> yeah, Freudian slip. Marwin Gonzalez at the plate. So it is another left-hander on Daniel Coulomb. Recalled from Triple A Nashville today. Fifth stint with the A's this year. It's a frequent flyer, Miles. Oh, no kidding. Just keep an apartment going at all times in both cities. Right hand hitters have hit 333 against him. Marwin waves on that curveball. Oh, George, last couple at bats, he is hanging it out. Kulo made a one day stint with the A's back on May 10th. Pitched that night at Boston. Curveball got him. It's a 1 2 3 inning as the Astros go down quietly. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Houston still on top, three zip. Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Orbit's hanging out everywhere and having a great time doing it. Three nothing Houston. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Marcus Simeon. He will lead it off followed by Billy Butler and Jake Smolinski here in the seventh inning. Dallas Keuchel. Still on board. Has allowed just three hits to the A's. Brings that breaking ball for a ball. Simeon 0 for 2 on the night. Did reach on an error that came back in the second inning. And Keichel leaves it up. That Rangers game at the Angels now has the Angels on top 7 6 in the sixth inning. Crushed but fouled on the left side. Still quiet in the Astros pen down the right side. Pitch number 103 for Dallas. And he falls behind three and one. Well, 
three and two as Simeon swings through it. Brent Strom. He agonizes with every pitch of the night. Keichel starts but then backs off. Three two from Dallas. Hit high in the air into right center field Springer calling. Marisnik will peel off and there's out number one. So with a three two count Keichel able to get the out. One out for Billy Butler. Butler has walked and struck out. Keichel with six punch outs on the night. Gotten a couple of double plays behind him. Want to strike him out, throw him out, double play. A bad pitch just down. 106 pitches on the day for Dallas Keichel. He's not afraid to go out there and throw some pitches. He's the only Astro pitcher, starting pitcher, averaging over 100 pitches per start. Right at 103. Well, he has certainly earned the opportunity. What a year he put together last year. Falls behind 3 and 0. Working with one out here in the seventh. A's have spread out the hits. One for Lowry, Valencia, and Ryan Healy. Three and one. Would appear that Billy Butler is not in agreement with that call. Ground ball right side. Nobody's there defensively as the shift was on. One out single for Billy Butler. Hit number four for the A's. Brings up Jake Smolinski. And now the Astros will get a man loose in the pen. Ken Giles will start to loosen. Bringing some heat right away. Semi shift now has Altuve on the first base side of second. Very short lead by Butler as Keichel misses badly on that first offering. Hundred and eleven pitches. You wonder at what point AJ says enough's enough. And 2 and 0. Yeah, in terms of overall sharpness, this doesn't compare to the previous start for Dallas Keuchel. And yet he's got a chance to get through possibly seven innings, as Brent Strom now is going to come out to the mound. And that's a long walk for a guy who has just had knee surgery. going to test our efforts up here. What do you want to talk about? Not sure. So I I wonder in this conversation I think there's a couple of things going on right here. You might be telling him this is your inning to get out of. Give him a breather and also give Ken Giles an opportunity to get loose down there in the bullpen. I also wonder if Brent Strom might have said get this out. This is as far as we can go. We'll give you one more man or possibly said if you can do it quickly we can get you a couple of outs in the inning. Well he has thrown a lot of pitches but he has not been under much duress in doing so. It's pretty much been self induced. Yeah I would say the biggest duress has been pitching with three balls to a lot of hitters. 115 pitches the most that Dallas has utilized in any game this year. Finds that inside edge. It's two and one. Yes. 
Smolensky, one of those hitters, at least based on when we've seen him, that's willing to take a number of pitches. Grounds one foul outside of third. Oh, didn't work. You don't want to do that uh, no, on your protégés, do you? I was trying to get him to kick it. It's good for banter and entertainment. I think Ron Washington does that with his infielders. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> good coach, bad coach, I think is what we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah. And now we're at it again. Three and two for Dallas. 115 he's matched the season high. That came against the Texas Rangers in Arlington on June 7th. In the air to right field Springer he's got to get back and quickly can't get there. One hop up against the wall. Butler can only get to third base on a double by Smolensky back to back hits. And the A's threatening now in the seventh inning. AJ coming out of the dugout. That's going to do it as Dallas Keuchel will work six and a third innings. This double by Jake Smolenski chasing him in the seventh. So it'll be Ken Giles summoned from the Astros pen. He'll be brought on to try to hang on to this 3 0 lead. And a very important win for the Astros to pick up tonight. Dallas Keuchel would love to make it six straight wins for the club in his starts. Giles coming on. 3 0 Houston. We'll be right back. Here in Oakland, California, the Astros leading it 3 0, but the A's threatening in the seventh inning. Runners at second and third following a couple of hits. And now Ken Giles with that assignment to keep it right here. Giles has been a big strikeout man out of the pen. He's right at 12.32 strikeouts per nine innings, so that is a high strikeout number for the reliever, Ken Giles, throwing pretty hard. Last pitch Friday. A 7 to 3 win in Seattle. You'll face Ryan Healy, the eight hitter. And Giles brings the strike. Healy one for two, a second inning single. He has also struck out one of six on the night, recorded by Dallas Keuchel. Driven on a line right center field in the gap and all the way to the wall. That'll play two. Healy into second base. And the A's trying to make a game of this thing. 3 2 Astros lead in the seventh. And those runs belong to Dallas Keuchel. Pretty good piece. 
piece of hitting, getting the fastball up out over the plate. Driving it in that opposite field gap. Healy has looked impressive with the, with the bat. And now a pinch hitter for the Oakland A's as they will pinch hit for Matt McBride, the nine hitter, the catcher. And they'll go to their all star catcher, Stephen Vogt. So he comes up in a big situation, tying run at second base, one out, and the top of the order following. Just something about this ballpark. It's like this kind of game is played time after time. Dallas has to be frustrated. Worked very well into the, the seventh inning, but those three ball counts yeah, came back to haunt. Definitely piled up, especially in that pitch count. In the air to center field, right at Gomez. Halfway is the runner at second, Healy. He'll go back to the bag on out number two. So that's a big out of Stephen Vogt. And now back to the top with Coco Crisp. That's Jake Marisnik, excuse me, in center field. Coco Crisp with a walk and 0 for 2 on the night. 0 for his last 15. And for Ken Giles, that assignment make it 0 for 16. Line drive into left field charging is Rasmus and because he charges so well he'll freeze the runner Healy at third base runners at first and third another base hit. Local crisp his first on the night it'll bring up Jed Lowry as a very good left fielder. Positioned appropriately too to get to that ball quickly. Now batting second base and you remember that Rasmus already has picked up an assist tonight a perfect throw to the plate A.J. Hinch has come out to the mound. There's nobody throwing in the pen. This is all about letting his pitcher catcher in the entire infield know exactly what he expects. Coco Crisp is a threat to run at first base and I imagine that's a big part of the conversation. Watch what happens on the base hit with Ron Washington and what he deals with. Yeah, he knew pretty well in advance to stop not to run in the face of Colby Rasmus right there because he's already experienced what Colby can do. So Giles has come on here in the seventh and balls have been hit sharply against him. And now Jed Lowry one for three on his night. Batting left handed for the first time. It's a tough scenario defensively. Do you throw if Crisp takes off running? Do you allow Crisp to steal second base and put a potential going run into scoring position? Evan Gaddis has thrown out the lone man that he's had a shot to get tonight. Ball and a strike on Lowry. And now one and two. Now might be an opportunity for Chris to go but I would opt to focus on the hitter right now if I was Ken Giles not worry about that runner at second base even though if he does move to second is the potential go ahead run. Chris goes the pitch. Fouled at the plate. 
Oh, exactly as you called it. These guys are giving me way too much credibility. I thought it was me giving you that credibility. Yeah. Oh, you earned I've it. I've got you fooled. That's well, you earned it. <laughs> Ken Giles has allowed two hits to the three hitters that he's faced, and the lone out hit to Marisnik in center. Crisp on the move, the pitch grounded back to the mound. It's going to be Correa. Backhand on the run and dug out by Marwin. Nice play on both ends. Carlos Correa and Marwin Gonzalez, and that'll do it as Giles gets through the inning, but not before the A's put two on the board. Charge to Dallas Keuchel through seven. It's 3 2, the Astros on top. A look at that final play of the inning. Nice play. It looked like it skipped off the bare hand of Ken Giles. And luckily, Carlos Correa was there to make a great play. Jose Altuve has needed no luck tonight. He has a single, double, and triple. Nice play by Marwin on the back yeah. end of that play. And you've got Carlos Correa waiting on deck. Yeah, that was a nice play on both ends. And much needed by the club. So 3 2 here in the eighth. Ball and a strike on Jose. Hit a homer. You ready for that? Yes. Home run would be the cycle for Jose Altuve. I want your voice all over it. Let's throw both voices. You got two? <laughs> yeah, I think Jose was ready for one right there. What kind of a list of cycle? Earners, do we have for the Astros? Brandon Barnes, the last one on this date, back in 13. Right there. I thought your name would be on there. No, my cycles are now completed in the media dining area. <laughs> no one, two to Jose. Yeah, I think we're all living in that world. Remember that cycle by Brandon Barnes? I do. Pretty exciting. Two and two on Altuve. So it's been two years for the Astros since their last cycle. Hit on the ground foul. Let's watch Brandon Barnes. It's a good way to start. Drive it out there by the gas pump. He was an exciting player to watch when he was in Houston. Yeah, he was. He 
embraced that role of being that fourth outfielder. Had the speed range out there. So he got in the home run and triple to start the night. That was a nice little slice double in there too. Strike three called on Jose. So it's not going to happen with this at bat in the eighth inning. He gets caught looking out number one. Daniel Coulomb gets him. That'll bring up Carlos Correa. One for two tonight. He has a stolen base. He also has a sack fly that came in the fifth inning. Astros put two runs on the board in that fifth inning, made it 3 0 at the time. RBI number 15, or make, excuse me, 59 on the year for Carlos. Frustrating for Altuve. I think Carlos Correa is going to try to bust one out of here. I wouldn't complain about that either. Not one bit. Loam's got a fastball. Looks like he has pretty good sink on it. Saw a good curve ball to put away Altuve looking and also has a slider. Two and one. Two and two. Hitters are acting like they're not picking up the baseball well. It's 86 miles an hour. It looked like it had a little bit of a cut movement to it. Two two coming up. Stephen Vogt, by the way, is the new catcher for the A's. Three and two to Carlos. Twenty two home runs a year ago in just 99 games. He takes ball four, a one out walk. He's aboard for Valbuena. Luis Valbuena had a big swing for the club back in the third Luis inning. RBI single Valbuena. came with two outs. Give the Astros a one nothing lead at the time. <laughs> Left hander Daniel Coulomb. And Correa last year in those 99 games stole 14 caught just four times this year. As he picked up a stolen base tonight his ninth of the year. The point of fouls it off 0 and to the count. Dallas Keuchel still in a position to pick up a W tonight. But most importantly the Astros need that W to get even in the series and. Obviously try to come back out tomorrow and win another series. Chopper first base side. Coulomb on it and he'll get the out at first base. Second out is moving into second is Correa.
Carlos Gomez do up Bob Melvin coming out to the mound. The A's have a right hander in their pen he is loose and he is summoned. So here in the eighth inning Astros on top by a run the A's go to the bullpen and we will be right back once again. Your attention please ladies and gentlemen. Threatening here in the top of the eighth with two outs. Make memories in an Astros game with our family friendly activities at every Sunday home game presented by Kroger. The next Sunday home game of the season is this Sunday when the Astros take on the Angels. For more information, visit Astros.com or call 1 877 9 Astros. That right hander that comes on to face Carlos Gomez is Liam Hendricks. 27 years of age out of Australia. Carlos Correa in scoring position. Gomez in the air to center field. Routine is coming in as Coco Crisp, and that'll do it for the Astros in the eighth inning. They leave a man at second. We played seven and a half. The Astros on top, 3 2. Lead over the Oakland A's. To the bottom of the eighth we go as Luke Gregerson now comes out of the Astros pen. To be pitcher number three on the night for the Astros. Pretty good whip for Luke Gregerson. Just moving into that setup role, allowing Will Harris to become the closer. 
That bottom line pretty good three and two thirds innings against Oakland this season only one earned run zero walks five punch outs. You'll face the three hitter Danny Valencia. Chris Davis to follow and then Marcus Simeon. Gregerson gets in front 0 and 1. One for three on the night for Valencia. Balls behind 0 and 2. For Dallas Keuchel tonight, six and a third innings, five hits, a couple of runs. They were earned, and they came in as Ken Giles was on the hill. Three walks tonight, six strikeouts for Dallas. He departs with an ERA at 470. And Valencia down on strikes, third time tonight. First out here in the eighth. Nice work by Luke. Model of efficiency, three pitches, gets a punch out, now good slider. Brings up the cleanup man, Chris Davis. Dangerous hitter, 23 home runs, takes the slider for a strike. And over the last seven days, Davis has been a pretty hot hitter, hitting 400, four home runs in that span. Ball and a strike. Against the Astros this year, he's had his struggles despite the home run last night, hitting just 152. Ball away, two and one. Coming into play, four home runs over the last four games. Had a pair against Toronto in a 5 4 win on the 16th. And now the count even at two and two. Hit in the air to center field. Not enough. Marisnik is right there. There's your second out of the inning. And it'll bring up Marcus Simeon. And if you can get Simeon here, that leaves six, seven, eight coming up for the ninth inning. I'll tell you what, it's pretty impressive how Luke Gregerson can go out there, basically tell everybody in the ballpark that he's going to throw a slider and still gets the job done. Just slips the fastball by once in a while, but you're right. His slider is that good. He throws it 60% of the time, two right handers to begin with. When he gets to two strikes, he throws it 65% of the time. And there's the slider under the knees. Do not forget the power of Marcus Simeon. Billy Butler waits on deck. Simeon with a 2 0 count. Slider stays in. Simeon has done very well against the Astros. 324 batting average, three home runs on the year. Four pitch walk. Simeon aboard. Two outs for Billy Butler. And you can't forget about the running game with Simeon. He has stole, stolen seven and eight tries this year. 
Well, two out base runners against the Astros pitching. Fourth walk of the night for Houston pitching. And now Alfonso will come up and pinch hit for the A's. It'll be Yonder Alonso batting with two outs here in the eighth inning. And he had a big night last night. So Billy Butler done with his night. One of one for two also drew a walk. Luke Gregerson falls behind. The pitch usage for Luke Gregerson changes with the left hander in that box. 75% of the time he's going to go with the fastball. He will break out a change every once in a while. But also has that slider. It's just amazing how drastic some of the tendencies are for Luke Gregerson. Runner goes from first. Pitch a strike and there's no throw down to second base off speed and a good jump by Simeon his eighth bag of the year and now Simeon in scoring position with two outs. Yeah really no chance on that off speed pitch Simeon picked a pitch good pitch to run on and also got a very good jump too. Gregerson in no rush to get to the plate. Two out walk and a stolen base. As the A's threaten here in the eighth. Keichel, Giles, and Gregerson for Houston. Half swing and he goes through. One and two now for Luke. And easily see the bat went through. Alonso has been a thorn for the Astros. 17 for 40, 425 the batting average, a couple of home runs. And when you consider he has just four long balls on the year, got a lot of work against the Strohs. Two and two, first base open. If you look beyond it's Jake Smolinski that waits on deck. Nice job by Evan Gaddis. Keeps that slider right out in front. But the count filled three and two. Do have first base open. Up some options for Luke Gregerson, how he's going to approach this 3 2 count. If he's going to stick with the fastball or throw the slider. Alonso has hit safely in seven of his last eight games and three two hit games amongst those. Lefties are hitting 242 against Luke, right handers a buck 15. Again, Gaddis with the block on that slider. That'll put two runners aboard a couple of walks in the inning. And Jake Smolinski comes up and he is being summoned back to the bench. As Josh Reddick now will be the pinch hitter. So those three big bats that laid back out of the starting lineup tonight Alonzo Vogt and Reddick now all in the game. Tough assignment now for Luke Gregerson. Well, 
Over 15,000 on hand here in Oakland tonight. Taking in a good one. One run game here in the eighth. Strike called outside edge. Start getting ahead early by Luke. Simeon the runner at second. Yonder Alonso at first base and that spin move towards second. The 0 1. Slatter in the dirt kicks away. Moving into third base is Simeon. Holding it first is Alonzo. And now that tying run 90 feet away. You don't see that too often. One runner advance, the other one doesn't. But yonder Alonzo, I guess, doesn't run all that well. And ball kicked away pretty good, though. Sure did. But if you're not anticipating ball in the dirt, you're not going to get a good jump. There's Simeon, the man at third. Let's go ahead and run it first, too. You'd think he'd be yeah. a little more aggressive getting into scoring position. And because of the two out traffic, the A's will at very least get to the top of their order in the ninth inning. It's now two and one on Reddick. Astros with nine hits, the A's with seven. Hit in the air to left field. Going back, Rasmus has room and backs to it. Makes the play, that'll do it. Look, Gregerson gets out of a jam in the eighth inning, leaves runners at the corners, and the Astros maintain that 3 2 lead. Leading the A's on top of the ninth. The Coca Cola Value Nines package is one of the best ballpark bargains available for select Monday through Thursday regular season games. This offer scores you a hot dog, soda, and popcorn all for just $18. To purchase tickets, visit astros.com slash Coke Value or call 1 877 9 Astros. Ash. Thank you, Julia. We go to the ninth inning. Astros on top by a run. Luke Gregerson able to wiggle out of that eighth inning. Getting a tough hitter, Josh Reddick, to fly out. And now the Astros got to make something happen. Colby Rasmus, Evan Gaddis, and Jake Marisnik, 7 8 9 in the ninth. Right hander Liam Hendricks still on the hill. Colby fouls it down the left side.
That shift on once again for Colby. And again on the left side. 11 dingers, 44, make that 43 RBIs for Colby. 0 for 3 tonight. And 0 for his last 15. Snap out time. That would be good to see. Just a nice, easy line drive right where the shortstop should be. It is 11th home run back on the 5th of July. Came against Seattle in Houston. Ground ball to first. One big hop. Valencia takes it to the bag. Out number one. Number 11. Evan. So the struggles yeah. continue for Colby Rasmus. Evan Gaddis comes to the plate, two for three. But for a fine play in left field by Chris Davis, a sliding, diving catch in the fourth inning. Evan Gaddis could be three for three tonight. And it's Will Harris getting ready for the ninth inning. A little bit tied up as Gaddis as he grounds to shortstop. Second out of the inning. Jake Marisnik now will bat with two outs and the base is empty. Or Jake, no, a long six. night with the bat, Jake. 0 for 3, a couple of strikeouts. Took a nice play by Lowry up the middle to get him in the seventh. They're in the middle of the eighth inning in Anaheim. Angels lead over the Rangers 8-6. The Astros with an opportunity to get back to three and a half games back of Texas in the American League West. Smudgy on top of the bill of the cap there for the kid. Popped up shallow in right field coming on Reddick. He'll make the play a one two three ninth inning. All about Will Harris in the defense now three two Houston as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning.
have a one run lead heading into the bottom of the ninth and Will Harris takes his place on the mound. We haven't seen Will Harris pitch the second half of the season. Last time we saw him was before the All-Star break and then he took off to San Diego for his first career All-Star appearance. Something very special to him. He had all his family there. So one of the coolest parts is just being in the room with all those greats and then even hearing David Ortiz address the club. So a pretty cool moment for him just to be there but then the opportunity that he had during the game to come in with the bases loaded in the eighth, two outs getting the huge strikeout, something we've seen Will Harris do with the Astros time after time, but it preserved that American League win for those guys and a very special experience for him, guys. And as Julia brings on Will Harris, Harris will face the eight, nine, and one spots here in the ninth inning. Ryan Healy is that eight hitter, and he has swung it very well. A couple of hits tonight, a single, single and a double. He has also struck out. One of the six strikeouts picked up by Dallas Keuchel. So Luke Gregerson after a couple of quick outs struggled to get through the eighth inning but maintained the three two lead. Good curveball by Will. Ball and a strike. Ryan Healy is certainly shown some pop in the bat. He appears to be now the young third baseman for the Oakland A's. And again that hook. I think that fastball he hit off Ken Giles in that opposite field gap for the two runs in this ball game for the Oakland A's are the reason he's getting breaking balls from Will Harris. Two run double in the seventh inning. And he was the first man faced by Ken Giles. Giles touched up for a couple of big hits in the seventh. Dallas Keuchel left the ball game with a couple of runners aboard. No runs had scored while he was on the hill, but those two runs charged to Dallas. Two and two for Will. Back to the hook again. He's gone nine for nine and save opportunities, has Harris. In the process, posting a 162 ERA. Got him looking on the heat at 93. So Harris. It's that first out here in the ninth. Only fastball that Healy saw in that at bat was the one that punched him out right here in a 3 2 count. Well located on that outer third. Ooh, that's a big out, especially with the 3 2 count. And now Stephen Vogt, who came on as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning and flied to center. Grinder for the Oakland A's hitting 287. Thirty one years of age is vote. Little cut job just off the inside edge. Two and oh. Looking for an answer. Vote in his fifth year in the bigs. Well spotted. It's two and one. Vote has been an all star last year in this. That cutter and it's 2 2. Tying him up with that cutter that is a beautiful thing. And again, Will Harris is not trying to do that. That is just his natural release that creates that cut. A 
again up and in with that thing. He wouldn't make much of a batting practice pitcher, but he's a heck of a pitcher out of the bullpen for the Astros. Hitters just hate BP pitchers that throw the natural cutter. Two two pitch. Curveball and vote just gets a piece. Look for an instant like Vogt was taking a walk toward the third base dugout. Maybe not. Look at that. He's trying to shake himself. That was a pretty nasty pitch from Will. Vogt came up with Tampa Bay in 2012. It's a big battle between a couple of All-Stars, and that fastball is fouled off. Yeah, these two guys playing on the same squad trying to defeat the National League just a week ago. Again, the 2 2. And again, fouled back. Lot of thought process going on here at the ballpark. We do the 2 2 again. And now 3 and 2. Bob Melvin and A.J. Hinch trying to figure out any way to get an edge in this thing. 3 and 2 on vote, one out in the ninth. Nothing comes easy. To the Astros in this ballpark. Well, you are right. Cutter drilled, but hooking foul. Wow, Brock Amani with a bare hand grab. Says, just stay out of my way. I'll take care of business. So don't be a scared. <laughs> well, the security guard ran for it. He's the one with the helmet on it, Brock Amani. What are you doing? You cut right in front of me. Just a just a baseball. <laughs> Three two pitch. Got a good old fashioned battle going on. I'd like to see a good old fashioned strikeout It'll work. No, they do it again at three and two. Lined into the gap in right center field. Springer will take it off the wall. Vote into second base has a one out double. And what an at bat that was for Steven Vote. It really was. Good battle. I always feel when the hitter has an opportunity to foul off that many pitches. It benefits him and you see right there why Stephen Vogt finally got a fastball out over the plate that he can handle and get the barrel to and he does and drives it in a right center field gap puts himself in scoring position with that swing. Well the Oakland A's do not make life easy on the Astros here. Vote at second base doesn't run all that well. Top of the order, Coco Crisp at the plate. The bat starts. The appeal down to third, palms down. There's nobody left on that bench for Bob Melvin to pinch run for Stephen Vote. They have used the bench. Coco Crisp with a base hit in the seventh inning snapped an 0 for 15. A ball and a strike. The A center fielder hitting 238.
And Jed Lowry waiting on deck. Will Harris will bring the 1 1. Curveball. That'll make it 1 and 2. And you keep in mind those arms in the outfield for the Astros. Colby Rasmus has already thrown out a run at the plate. Fouled on the left side. It stays in one and two. Want to be a closer, huh? Yeah, I guess you could say you want to be a skipper. Tough jobs. Harris with the one two. Hit deep to right field, back at the wall. This one is off the wall. Springer chasing. Coco Crisp just jogs into second and now jogging toward third. As the ball comes back in, Coco Crisp thought he had a home run and now instead is tagged out. And that was an easy three bagger. Coco Crisp has tied the game but had a golden chance to be at third base with two out or one out rather. Did he think the game was over? He did. Harris upset with himself for leaving that fastball up out over the plate. That ball clearly hits off the top of the wall. Nothing to review here, but Coco Crisp obviously thought that Stephen Boat's run was the game winner. He went into shutdown mode, thinking this game was over. He was looking for some celebration and didn't see anybody coming out of that dugout. Well, I wonder if that's accurate, that Crisp thought that won the game instead of that what it was a home run. The well, ball clearly didn't get out. So we're tied in the ninth inning 3 3 as Will Harris picks up his first blown save for the club and you got to wonder what went on for Coco Crisp. You say just the reaction when he was going around first he was just kind of trotting around thought the celebration was going to start. That was my opinion. That seems more likely than the home run thought on his part but seems very unfazed by what just took place. Well, he kept hitting his chest like my bad. Jed Lowry now with a one two count. Nine five six. On the out on Coco Crisp. RBI double. Mm. Had one out double by Stephen Vogt so big in the inning. It's a day game tomorrow. It'll be Doug Fister on the hill for the Astros. Daniel Mingdon, the youngster from the Houston area, goes for the Oakland A's. And now Pat Neshek gets it loose. Ground ball foul outside the bag. Oh, that's tough to be Bob Melvin and you're happy that Coco Crisp ties the game with a big hit but. And you, you got to be smarter than that. Even if he just shuts it down at second base he's in scoring position with one out. It's 
So nine straight saves for Will Harris and that streak is done. Hit foul on the left side. Three and two and how many of the three and twos have we seen tonight. We have seen a ton. Get to a point where we could use a little bit of that heater up here. Run coming across made it a little bit chillier. I know it did, that. didn't it? Strike three called inside edge. Lowry caught looking, but the A's in the ninth inning come up with a couple of doubles and a run to tie it at three. Presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. Coco Crisp, the man who ties the game with a double off the wall, but also the guy who just jogs around the bases and gets tagged out. Let's watch that play. Yeah, get a better look at this and see what happened here. He sees it off the top of the wall. Well, I don't know. Is Where's he going? See that's why I wonder did he think that was a home run somehow. George Springer on the first pitch hits a drive to right not enough. Reddick is there and makes the catch. George has had some really good swings the last three A.B.'s. But that's out number one top of the order Marwin Gonzalez follows. Now batting number nine. And the thing Marwin about Coco Crisp Gonzalez. after the out just looked like no problem. It, well the thing that caught me off guard is when he ran into the dugout before he got in there he was hitting himself on the chest like saying my bad. Yep, my bad smile on the face. Yeah see the little tap like my bad. That's the only thing that made me think that he just completely forgot where we were at in this game. It's still Liam Hendricks on the mound. Marwin's one for four tonight. Third inning single. Pat Nisha continues to throw for the Astros. A one and one count now on Marwin. Saw the question on Twitter. How is Coco Crisp still in the game? The A's have nobody else other than a pitcher to throw out there. Even if you want to play tough guy as a skipper. Yeah, you know, there's nobody to replace him. A 
We're in the tenth inning. Yeah, I tied the game with a double, but. This madness. I mean, the last two days here in Oakland. Wow. The Astros are in pursuit of win number 51. Mike Fires last night kind of got heated. And the A's won game one of the series. By the way, that assist for George Springer, his 10th of the year. That might go down as the easiest one he had all year. It's the only one with a guy jogging between second and third. Tagged out at shortstop. Fouled off Marwin. Trying to put together an A.B. Will Harris had one get away from him. What could have been? It's this ballpark, man. Seems to be, doesn't it? My gosh. Well, I've only been doing this job for four years, and it seems like every time we've come through here, it's just been a mystery in trying to how to I'm trying to figure out how to get wins and get out of here unscathed. Of course, some of the comebacks have been on the Astros' part, but you know, last year, for example, they won ten of. It's the moon. It That's is. what it is. All the excuses are summed up right there in that picture. That bad boy has come in close tonight. Hey, Gooch has got rally candy. Are you telling me he was prepared for this? We had rally candy before you got a hold of it. What are you blaming me for? You're blaming Gene. You start pointing. Can't we all just get along? They're doing a better job at it than we are. <laughs> they seem to be. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, but they're not battling over candy. Popped up on the right side, foul territory. It is Valencia, and he'll make the catch. Two down here in the tenth inning. Nobody aboard for Jose Altuve, and keep in mind, he is still shooting for the cycle, and the home run Ooh, I like is the call. exactly what he's looking for. Really Number like that call. Number 27. Jose Do it, two. Altuve. You're not opposed. No. They aren't either. Nobody seems to be able to get together with their their hats and their unis and. Well, in their defense the Astros have gone through several wardrobe changes over the years. Well that that has been the case. Jose Altuve sitting on 15 home runs. 2 and 0. Oh. Three for four tonight. League leading batting average at 352 as Stephen Vogt goes out to the mound. And I don't know what you say. You don't want to groove one on Altuve, but Carlos Correa waits on deck. Mark Zemchinski, the left hander, will loosen up now for the A's. Two and one. Of course, Altuve is such a threat. Let him draw a walk, steal a bag, and Right in scoring position for Correa. Fastball lined into center field. Fourth hit of the night. Second four hit game on the road trip for Jose. He is four for five. A couple of singles, a double, and a triple. And now maybe you play the running game in front of Correa. 16th four hit game on the season. Unbelievable. Run his career 16 and yeah, on the career. Yeah, I was going to say good career. Yeah, that would be a heck of a year. I'm losing my mind again. 
good piece of hitting. Didn't try and get too big on this either, knowing he needs the home run for that cycle. Chooses to hit a rocket back up the middle and get on base. Good professional hitting. The phenomenon continues. And now does he go? Leads the league with 25 bags. Like a little extra time hanging out with our carpeted desk, huh? You, you <laughs> cherish this opportunity every year. I know. Oh gosh, it. nine, ten times a year, it doesn't matter. Correa takes a ball. Altuve does not go. Yeah, there we are. This is that's that's carpet pure. heaven here on the uh, on the desk. Yeah, oh, that's uh, some 1965. <laughs> stuff this going on there, once man. was in somebody's van. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fastball taken for a strike. <laughs> you took this off the inside of your van and put it in here. <laughs> I, I once had that van. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. It wasn't a 1930. That's but the last time they cleaned it. <laughs> that may be the case, huh? <laughs> Did they make carpet then? Maybe Correa taking a pitch or two just to enable Altuve a chance to run. And again, Altuve does not go. This might be a good time to hit right here. 2 1 count. Doesn't want to fall behind 3 and 1 and groove one. 14 dingers on the year for Carlos. Carlos has hit a couple big home runs in this ballpark. Drove in a run tonight with a sack fly in the fifth inning. Had a hit back in the first. Ground ball left side. Simeon bobbles, and he's not going to have a play. Everybody is safe. And the second error in the series for Marcus Simeon. And now it's up to Luis Valbuena. Never a good time for an error, but especially bad time right now. Ball was hit hard. But again, a play that should be made. Bob Melvin comes out to the mound. He points to the pen. The left-hander Mark Zipchinski will come in as Liam Hendricks' night is over. Astros with runners at first and second. Two outs here in the tenth inning. And again, we will be right back. Tied 10th inning the Astros with runners at first and second and two outs as left handed Mark Zipchinski comes out of the pen for the A's. 44th appearance on the season for the left hander. He's only got 29 and two thirds innings under his belt. That whip well over one and a half. He comes on to face the left handed bat of Luis Valbuena. Luis came into this game hitting 273 against left handers.
One ball and no strikes. Simeon, the shortstop, plays close to Altuve, cutting down the likelihood of the running game. 2 0. Simeon backed off early, and you wonder did Altuve sense that and maybe consider running? Will Harris, a lot to think about tonight. But it could have been worse. Without a big mistake by Coco Crisp. There's that spin move towards second with nobody defensively there. It's not right. The 2 0. And now 3 0. Pat Neshek continues to throw in the Astros pen for the Oakland A's. They're quiet down the left side. Is there a green light for Valbuena? I'll tell you what, he doesn't need to expand the zone. For this reason right here, this walk pushes that runner 90 feet closer. Bases are juiced now. Two outs as Carlos Gomez comes to the plate. Now batting. And you keep in mind that Carlos Gomez Carlos launched a grand Gomez. slam in Oakland, the second of his career. Fifth on the season for the Astros. Ground ball hit the third one big hop and that'll do it for Gomez and the Astros in the tenth inning they leave three through nine and a half all tied at three. Tied at three, the Astros and A's as Pat Neshek now comes out of the pen for Houston. Neshek last pitch in Seattle on the 16th. He went a two thirds of an inning, only threw six pitches to get out of there. This will be his 37th appearance on the season. Great whip under one. Right handers having an extremely tough time with that funky delivery, fastball slider mix. Every once in a while, you get the chance to see that Ephus pitch too a little bit. He'll face the three four five spots. Danny Valencia leads it off. The Astros are eight and four in 12 previous extra inning games. Eight and six here in the month of July.
Nishek falls behind on Valencia. Hayes first baseman hitting 299. Plenty of power. Big cut as he swings through it. We watched him today put on quite a display with the power game and batting practice. Slider misses away. I'm not sure by how much. That looked yeah. like a pretty good pitch. Sure did. Check. Sure did. Caught the edge. Yep. That even surprised Danny Valencia. In the air, left center field. Rasmus is there. First out here in the tenth. The Astros held a 3 0 lead going into the bottom of the seventh inning. Dallas Keuchel started that frame, couldn't get it done. Ken Giles came on and yielded a pair of runs on the slate of Dallas Keuchel. And then the A's came up with a run in the ninth inning to tie it. Chris Davis at the plate. He is 0 for 4 on the night. Struck out in the fourth. Get that notion that you want to find a fastball and jack it out of here, and then you get the slider. Plenty of power here with Davis. More power on deck with Marcus Simeon. The one two from Nishek. Much of the crowd has already left here this evening. The 2 2. Swing and a miss on the Heat. So Nishek strikes out Davis after getting Valencia to fly out. Two outs, bases empty for Simeon. Nice work. He challenged him right there, too, with that fastball. Just came right after him. Now batting Ten strikeouts now of Oakland hitters. Those two are not believers in the rally cap. They might have been just check checking the time. You don't check the time on a game that doesn't run by a clock. No, that's right. That's right. No, they're not in Houston at least. Well, there's still some fans keeping yeah. up with us. Lay there on that couch. Hang with us. See if we can bring the W home. Line drive to left field coming on Rasmus can't get there. It's a two out single for Simeon. He stole a base after walking in the eighth inning so we'll watch that part of the game. It brings up yonder Alonso and it also brings out A.J. Hinch as Tony Sip is loosening in the pen. How many times have we seen it in this series? It's only been two games so far, but with two outs, the A's just find ways to extend innings. If they do, and A.J. Hinch is going to go to the bullpen. Left-hander Tony Sip comes on. He'll face that left-handed bat of Yonder Alonso. He'll do it in a moment. We'll be back.
pitch here in the 10th inning. And Marcus Simeon aboard as Tony Sip comes on, facing the left handed bat of Yonder Alonso. Get a look at Tony Sip's numbers. Last time he was out there was on the 17th, when an inning and a third gave up one hit and a walk through 18 pitches. So that assignment, get the left handed bat here. Another left handed bat waiting on deck, that's Josh Reddick. Marcus Simeon a threat to run and he goes pitches low and there's no throw it's a stolen base so just like that Simeon into scoring position his second bag of the night good jump just going right in the face of Tony Sip he went first move guessed right got the bag nine bags out of ten tries now for Simeon. And good speed in scoring position. Carlos Correa playing behind Simeon, but well behind. Sip falls behind. Two balls and no strikes. Some smart fans taking naps during the day so yeah, they could be ready for this. Yeah, that's real nice. Yeah, we appreciate you guys being with us. And now 3 0. Oh. But again, Reddick coming up next to left handed bat. Left up in the strike zone. Three and one now. Ooh, All right. Gave us one. We don't care if you're sleepy. Stay with us. <laughs> Three and one. And now the walk. To Alonso, so runners at first and second. All that really matters is Simeon at second base. Josh Reddick will stand in. Came on as a pinch hitter in the eighth inning and flied out. Hit it pretty well down the left field side. Ten hits for both clubs tonight. Reddick way out in front as he pulls it foul. Three very good arms in the outfield. Strike called on the outside corner. Sip in front. 0 and 2. Sip brings the 0 2. Professional hitter right there. Trying to get him to chase. Also seen him roll that slider over too. Got that shift on. Just seen him roll it in, do that shift.
hit on the ground left side, and nobody's there. Here comes Simeon to the plate, the throw by Correa, offline, and the A's win it in the 10th inning. A 4-3 final on a little ground ball on the left side with the shift on, and the A's have taken two straight as they celebrate on the field.